Well, welcome once again to the Doctor Digital Podcast. And my special guest today is Austin Kerr, and he is from Humanagement.io. .io, and I got to get him on the show because here we're talking about management and people and human capital and all those great things. So perfect for the show. This is the only show that is dedicated to all those people who want to grow their show using social audio, and that is social media, podcasting, all those things along those lines. So with all the things that have been happening in the management space and with pandemic and all these other things, I wanted to get Austin on the show. So with that as an introduction, thanks for taking some time out, Austin. Welcome to the show. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into the field that you are in? Yeah, absolutely. So first, I want to say thank you so much for having me on the show. Welcome. Very, very happy to be here. Um, so basically, I have a lot of experience dealing with HR, being an executive over right. not only HR, but also sales and marketing. I spent the last five years at a real estate investment company that started as a startup. I was one of the first five employees there. It's won several awards for growth and stuff now. And through that time period, I picked up a bunch of different little tools that helped me to do HR and to be an executive and manage That's sales cool. teams and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it kind of I naturally fell into a role where I was building custom software because the real estate we were managing was very unique. So I, I ended up managing a team who was building that software. And once I started like building software, my mind opened up to understand that there's possibilities there to yeah. improve the tools and things that are so helpful for you. So that's when I kind of decided to bring a lot of these HR tools that I had picked up and improve them by not only uh, bringing them together, but also making their functionality better. And so that's where Human Management was born. It was the collection of all the tools I found to be most useful in managing employees all brought under one umbrella. Okay. So not to put words in your mouth, but I'm just thinking now with the pandemic and things like that, because I'm interested in sort of the changes that you have seen, maybe what has been happening, because obviously this has been a really critical time of adjustment and people going back to work and not wanting to go back to work, whatever. So this is really critical for HR and in a great spot. So can you tell us a little bit about the changes that you have seen? Yeah, sure. So it it's really interesting. I mean, when the the pandemic first started, I was already starting to build this software in my spare time, but I was still working full time at my last employer. And so we really, mm. we did not adapt very fast to that. Like, you know, yeah. everyone get working from home and, you know, trusting the employees and all that sort of stuff. One of the big problems we, where we ran into is we worked a lot on routing forms um, or some people call them checklists. So like a lot of our processes were in these kind of like, checklist formats yeah, so okay. you know when someone would go to buy a house we have a checklist and you would start the checklist and it would go between multiple people saying hey do these things check it off do these things check it off and yep. it made things very very uniform and nice and so the, one of the biggest problems we ran into was when everyone went home we no longer could have these physical checklists which were kind of sure. like one of the very basic bedrocks of our company and yeah. instead we ran into all these other weird problems like you know, trying to email them between each other mm -hmm. or trying to, uh, and then you wouldn't really have checks on the break boxes or, you know, certain information filled out that you need to fill out the next part. So that was one of the biggest struggles that we ran into. That's obviously one of the features that I incorporated is, you know, checklist, which can go between multiple people and are fully digital. Yeah. Um, but in addition to that, it was, it was really interesting from like a culture standpoint, because a lot of your culture, when you are a, a uh, not a brick and mortar business, because that obviously means like you sell goods, but, you know, at, uh, an office with a physical location, a lot of your culture is kind of based upon this idea that you yeah. can talk to each other and sure, uh, yeah, 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 break from culture, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, run, running into that and, you know, also talking to a lot of the companies that are now using key management, um, it, that's also put a big shock on people because in a lot of ways, they found better ways to build culture. I think partially because a lot of companies have found that now they're worrying about it. Before, a lot of companies didn't really worry so much about culture because they were all physically there together. And when they had to go remote, that was kind of one of the first thoughts was like, well, how will we still have a sense of community? And I think that was one of the really great things that came from the pandemic because whether, whether or not you have people all working remote, partially remote, or everyone in office now, after the pandemic, the idea of culture is now so much more instilled in a company 
as something that's important. And so I, I think that's like mm. a, a, a super wonderful thing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that some of the things that people can do, which benefit or, you know, can can help their, their, their culture, especially in a remote environment, is coming up with some sort of small uh, game or some sort of activity that makes people want to, like, think about the other person. Like, uh, in, in one of the offices that I've, you know, helped establish, uh, they do something where every day the office goes through and they choose a different song. You know, it has to be, obviously, office appropriate. But they choose a song and it gets played on Zoom, shared to everyone. Um, like the music video and it's a really cool way you know especially with people from different cultures you speak different languages that really just like brings a little bit of warmth into that office and into that like remote atmosphere so anyways that's a few of my takeaways on remote work and how it's affected the workplace yeah and that's that's a good one uh you know it's like don't get me started when you get to music because you know i love it so (laughs) yeah i mean i think that's the thing that's so great about like having people share music, you can do yeah. a lot of things like where you're from. But music, so many people, like that's their heart. You know, if you ask someone to play a song, you're going to learn a lot more about that person than you would ever learn from talking to them. You yeah. know, and I, I think that's wonderful. But it is. That's a terrific tip. That's a great one. So are there some hot growth areas that you can speak to and address to maybe post pandemic or some of the tips that you have had? So what are some of the hot growth things that you have seen in HR or in handling and culture with people and what have you. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, like I was saying, um, Zoom has become a big, Zoom or other, you know, similar platforms have become a big part of the work atmosphere. So I think there's a lot of good and bad, you know, there's some other softwares like Mira that has, has some really great whiteboard features, which I've seen a lot of companies um, have that that's had a really positive effect on them because in kind of the old style of meetings where everyone would be sitting in a room and they'd be talking, you know, there are some advantages to that, obviously, because it's harder for people to be distracted when you have, you know, nine people in a Zoom meeting, there's, you're not really ever sure that they're not playing on their phone or something while someone else is talking. Yeah, I mean, that's a reality that can be in the negative. But one of the the big things that I've seen companies using to grow, um, to take your, your question in one phrase, is that they've been, yeah, using a lot of the remote tools to collaborate better. Because like, I'll, I'll give you an example. So, you know, it's really important to have communication done in your office. One of the things that my software does that helps people with communication is it has a system for request and approvals. So let's say, you know, you're dealing with a client and they bring up a question you don't know how to answer. Mm-hmm. Well, rather than just okay. sending it in a message, which the person you ask may or may not be able to answer it and you might forget, you can send it as a request. Hey, these are some type of questions I'm getting. I need to know how to answer these type of questions. All right. So if you send it in a request, it's a nice formatted way. It gets answered. You know how long it was sent to go. You know, it's recorded. And then once it's answered, they can then assign to the person who made the request certain things that they needed done. Okay, well, I now need you to uh, write up this answer I've given to you and email it to all of the clients so they now understand. Mm-hmm. So something like that is really great. And it takes the place of a more old-fashioned person-to-person uh communication line where someone would go, you know, walk into someone's office and go, yeah. hey, I need some help. Sure. And the problem with, with someone walking in and going, hey, I need some help, or even sending an IM and saying, hey, I need some help immediately, is that it it's, gives no, it grants no, like, um, presence to how busy that senior is, what they're in the middle of, no question. what's happening. There, there, no question, you know, the person sitting there and they're working and someone comes in and they go, yeah. well, stop whatever you're doing. Now, what they might have been doing might be extremely important. If you're a manager, if you're a business owner, then you know yeah. how important some of the things that you're doing are. And when you get interrupted, you sometimes completely lose track of that. So yeah, I mean, like having having the communication and those levels be more digital, like using my mm-hmm. approvals and request system or using a Slack, I think is also a really great way that businesses have grown because people can be more organized. Okay. That thing is wonderful. Are there some things that you would recommend and generally say to business owners that here are some things that you have discovered and this is what you would do and much say some suggestions that you might make for, say, the general generic business owner? What could they be looking for? What should they be doing now? Um, So one of the biggest suggestions I would have is that tracking production is really important. Um, There's two types of workers and they like, sorry, not two types of workers, but there's two types of jobs, two types of roles. 
right? Yeah. And it's important that you understand those differences because yeah. how you manage those and how you get the most out of those employees is very different. And so this difference I'm talking about is whether their work is project-based or whether it's repetitive, right? True. So yeah, to give you, sure. the, yeah, so to give you like the most basic example, a construction worker, his work is project-based. You know, there's certain things, he's not doing the same thing every day. He's actually doing different things that are all part of a big project, right? One yeah. day he's hammering nails, the other day he's putting up wood, whatever, right? And so track production on that level is one way. The other thing, the other very simple example would be like a salesperson. Their job is entirely repetitive. They're going to call people. They're going to be in meetings. They're going to present the product. The next day, they're going to call people, be in meetings, present the product. The next day, they're going to call people, be in meetings, present the product, right? Yeah. So when people understand sales post, they very clearly can think with the value of their post is how much money they're selling, right? Are they bringing in dollars, right? If you're a podcast person, then you might have um, not necessarily a typical salesperson. You might have like a manager who helps you get sponsorships and you would track the production as how much sponsorships did they get and how much money did they bring in? That's very, very easy. And it works very well. And a lot of places, salespeople, the way that the relationship between the salesperson and the manager is very clear. And mm -hmm. some people who aren't in that role might look at it as like favoritism and I don't think it's favoritism. I think it's because it's easy for a business owner to understand, oh, I'm paying the money and in return, I get more money. Have I got more money? Good, I'm yeah. happy. Have I not got more money? Good, I'm sad. Very easy, right? And so the thing is, you can apply that same methodology to any type of repetitive work, right? So let's say you have a call center and people are dialing just to book appointments. Well, you can track their appointments. Let's say you have a chair factory and you're putting together chairs. Well, you should be tracking how many chairs each person did, Which, yeah. right? And you track it week to week. And by tracking it week to week, you can then compare. And if you let them track it week to week, instead of you and you just counting it somewhere else, then they get to make a game of it. Because the biggest problem that repetitive workers do is that their job starts to lose meaning mm, six months in. Because they're doing the same thing. I'm building chairs. I built a chair. Okay, I built a chair. Okay, I built a chair. And after they do that enough times, even though in the beginning they might have went, oh, I'm going to, you know, embellish this, this nook and cranny and really, you know, that kind of gets lost when they're just building chairs and building chairs and building chairs because there's no game to it. So when you give someone a, a statistic, when you say, okay, we're going to count the number of chairs. I'm going to have you count that. I'm going to have you, you know, put this on a graph and they can see, oh, a graph, got it. Now they can play a game against themselves and try to challenge themselves. And just doing that one action, I think more than a lot of things will create more production because the person will, most people, not everyone, but most people will start to care about that number. And it'll start to make them feel alive when it's up and make them feel sad when it's low, which is how you want employees to, to operate. So, make, so in making sure that you give all of your employees a statistic is great. Now that doesn't work on project-based employees. Right. So project employees, it's really important to track your projects mm -hmm. because like I am a software developer, I have, you know, not physical uh, house builders, but I have software right. house builders. Right. And it's the same sort of thing. So it's very important that I give them tasks, that they understand that there is an end of what they're doing, that they you show them uh, what they're building, because sometimes mm -hmm. someone who's hammering uh, a nail in a square doesn't understand that they're actually building a chimney because they're not building that part. And that's so it's right, really yeah. important to give people that reality because it makes them stay motivated. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, is one of the, if, if I was going to say one of the biggest areas where people don't understand employees or where they mess up with employees is because they don't understand motivation. They don't think of employee motivation as their own motivation. Sometimes people try to motivate employees by like, bribing them. Like, oh, I'll give you $5 or something. And that's yeah. fine. And it can work. And certain people are money motivated, like a salesperson. But a lot of people, and even salespeople, they really benefit from seeing the value of the work, seeing how it's contributing to other people, how it's helping other people. I said earlier how important it is to have a meeting where people are communicating with each other, even you know, yeah. sitting around talking around the water cooler is important because if you then connect what they're doing, what they're working towards, and how that is helping all the people around them, that's when you get a community. You don't actually have to spend money not that it's bad to give perks. Oh, there's lots of advantages to those. But the mm -hmm. biggest insight I would say to a, a business owner or an HR person is to make sure that people understand how what they're doing every day is helping the people around them, how they're making 
other people's day better. And if someone feels that and you really make sure, not candy coated, oh, everyone matters, blah, 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 but like really making sure that they see you did this and that created that, okay. that will empower people and give them purpose and give them joy. So mm-hmm. I think that's, that'd be my biggest advice for that. Interesting. So what types of expertise do you offer business owners? How can you assist them? In other words, uh, there are some tips and ideas that you've had and software and what have you, but what is it that you offer then a business owner who perhaps is interested in, in what you're doing? Because it's, it's a really important area in HR, people, <laughs> production, yeah, right? So, yeah. So I offer two services. Um, the main one is human management. Human management is... Um, like I said, it, it's I've put the last two years all of my time and energy into building it. It is truly a platform that if you go and you use it in your company, you will very easily see that your job as a manager, as a HR person becomes easier because it goes further than any other software I've seen in helping owners with the struggles they're going to deal with. It's not all features that you necessarily thought of. Like you probably were never like, I need a request and approvals feature or I need some sort of statistic tracking feature for employee production. These people don't think of this, but if you use it, you will find that your job is much easier. The other um, thing that I offer is I do offer coaching. So, you know, if someone wanted to reach out, um, you know, for hundred dollars an hour, I'll meet with them. I'll, you know, go over these strategies. I'll help them with implementation. I'm happy to talk to employees. Uh, advise them on hiring, uh, different questions asked on firing, different things to say, different strategies, the you know value of, e- of either. Um, I've helped a lot of businesses. I love really helping people find that spark in managing and working with employees because I know that so many business owners don't intend on that when they start their business. They intend on True. having freedom. They intend on making sure. more money. They, and then they become a manager and that's their whole job. And so I find some people, they... It's not that they couldn't enjoy that. It's just they they weren't expecting it. So yeah. if you show them the the bright points in it, the things that really where you can really make a difference for your customers and for your employees, then that's what I I love making people feel more excited about those roles because I think they're some of the most important roles in the world. Yeah, if uh, you don't have the people, you don't have a business. <laughs> I mean, you got to keep them happy. You got to <laughs> keep them engaged and Motivated. disengagement. Yeah, motivate. Disengagement is a huge problem. So there's a number of things that you've touched on here. It's really learned a lot. It's really a fascinating area in HR. Now, if a person was listening and a business owner had heard some of the things that you had offered and tips and what have you, how would you suggest that they get a hold of you and what could they do to follow up? Yeah, so they would just go to humanagement.io. Um, everything is there for uh, you know signing for the software or getting in touch with me directly. You can also find me um, on Twitter at Austin M. Kerr um, or on LinkedIn at Austin Dash Kerr. But human management is really the main one. Um, and that's spelled H U M A N A G E M E N T dot I O. Yeah, sounds good. Fascinating area. Learned a lot, a lot of good tips. And, you know, it's such a critical part of a business because if you don't have the people and are not motivated, you don't have a business anymore. So, Really glad and thank you for taking some time out to chat. I appreciate it and learned a lot today. Thank you, Austin. Appreciate it much. No problem. Sounds good. So that's it for this particular episode of Dr. Digital Podcast. Until next time, we'll see you and have another exciting guest. The only podcast that's here for business owners who want to increase their business using social audio, podcasting, and voice, all those kinds of things. Until next time, Deus Volt.